our program lineup. Name some numbers of ball players here. Program lineup. In your program lineup here. Name some numbers of ball players. In your program lineup. January 3rd, 1971. A cool, clear, sparkling day at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. The scene for a pro football game with a Super Bowl flavor. For this would be the first championship of the new American Football Conference. The first official meeting of the Baltimore Colts and the Oakland Raiders. Of rookie coach Don McCafferty and pro football's youngest coach John Matten. Of the old master John Unitas and conference leading Darrell DeMonica. And the old man of the miracle, George Blander. This would be a day for the young to appreciate their elders. A rare day for every pro football fan to savor to the full. for the old guard of the NFL to meet the old guard of the AFL on a brown and barren field of dirt. This would truly be a duel in the dust. Darrell DeMonica in pro football's number one offense could not penetrate the Baltimore defense in the game's early stages. They were throttled on the ground and inept in the air. Oakland could manage but six plays and only one completion in the first quarter. A six-yard outlet pass to fullback Hewitt Dixon as the Raiders were twice forced to surrender the ball without a first down. When the Colts got the ball, John Unitas and his pass-minded offense were faced with 11 large and angry men whose specialty is defense against the pass. Come on, defense, dig in! Come on, on, Tom! Let's get back down that old man! Hey, Ben, you know they're gonna throw, let's go! Come on, Ben! Let's go! Hey, Will, let's go, dig in out there! All right, here they come! Ben beats that, that's ball! Beat him! Beat him! Out of way! Out of way! At first, John Unitas attacked the Oakland defense at its strongest points by throwing long against the Raiders' notoriously quick and tough defensive backs. While softening the deep defenses with long-range bombing runs, Unitas softened the front lines with the explosive thrusts of power runners Norm Boulash and Tom Nowatzki. Unitas quickly established a number of talented receivers. Number 88, tight end John Mackey. And wide receivers Roy Jefferson, number 87. 
Eddie Hinton, number 33, and Ray Perkins, number 27. When things got tough, Unitas went after the first down on his own and got it. But when he had driven the Colts to the Oakland Four, the Raiders finally stopped Unitas and brought about a field goal attempt by young Jim O'Brien. He'll miss this one. He can't kick this ball. Dang, kid. Rookie. Come on, rookie. Rookie. Hey. O'Brien's field goal gave Baltimore a three to nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, Darrell LaMonica got the Oakland running attack moving for the first time. Particularly effective was fullback Furet Dixon, number 35. Despite the effectiveness of the running attack, LaMonica turned to his favorite play, the bomb. A play which almost gave him the lead, but a play for which he soon paid the price. Giant Bubba Smith had charged in almost untouched, and LaMonica's season was suddenly over. John Unitas, meanwhile, continued to challenge the Raiders' strength as he launched one bomb after another. For a second time, a sure touchdown to Eddie Hinton was barely missed in the end zone. Later in the second quarter, another long Unitas pass for Hinton was almost intercepted by number 24, all-pro cornerback Willie Brown, who thought he should have had the ball, but since the Colts had to punt, the play did not seem crucial at the time. No one, least of all the relieved Oakland defense, could have foreseen what was about to happen to them. David Lee's skyscraping punt nosed over and was mishandled by George Atkinson for the game's only fumble. The Colts recovered, and suddenly trouble was on the way for John Madden and the Raiders. In a slow-motion replay, we can see that Unitas faked a handoff to Norm Boulash and then, behind excellent protection, threw down range to a wide-open Eddie Hinton, who caught the ball over his shoulder and made his way to the Oakland two-yard line. On the next play, Norm Boulash followed Tom Nowatzki into the end zone. And suddenly, the Colts led 10 to nothing. For the Raiders, the time for a miracle had arrived early. And the man of the hour, as he had been so many times before, was George Blanda, the oldest player in pro football, the crusty folk hero who had saved the Raiders time and again during the long season. At first, Blanda moved the ball by passing to his backs, Charlie Smith and Eurick Dixon. When he tried to throw to his tight end or his wide receivers, Blanda had no more success than LaMonica, 
and three of football's best receivers went the entire first half without a single completion among them, as Oakland recorded a paltry total of nine yards passing for the half. The Raiders got a break when a roughing the kicker penalty gave Blanda a shot at a 48-yard field goal. And old George's strong right leg finally put the Raiders on the scoreboard before halftime. Go straight down that field as fast as you can. I'll throw it out of the end zone by that point. In the third quarter, George Blanda's first priority was to complete some passes to his tight end and his two wide receivers. All of them ranked in the AFC's top ten for the year. Number 87, rookie of the year Raymond Chester, the tight end. Number 81, the speedy and elusive deep threat Warren Wells. And the other wide receiver, Fred Belitnikoff, number 25, the man of sticky fingers and many moves. A blitz by Ted Hendrick set Blanda back, but with the experience of 21 pro seasons behind him, Blanda mapped his itinerary to the end zone. First, a screen pass to Charlie Smith to slow down the rush. Next, on third and long, a crossing pattern to Warren Wells, who duped his way to a first down. Finally, a fake to the fullback, a clever move by Belitnikov, a pressure throw by Blander, and suddenly the game was even at 10 to 10. In reviewing the play, we can see that just before the catch, Colt cornerback Charlie Stukes fell down resulting in the easy touchdown for Belitnikov. With the game now tied for the first time since the early moments, it was up to Unitas to get the Colts rolling again. And this he did with a first down pass to Eddie Henton. In slow motion, Hinton's act appears ready for Ringling center ring. Behind great protection, Unitas again went for Hinton, who made another clutch catch for another first down. But for the third time in the game, an easy cold touchdown got away as a perfect pass dropped directly between the hands of Roy Jefferson. Jim O'Brien was again called in to salvage the drive. The score was untied at 13 to 10, but the Colts were not satisfied. What happened was I took it at about eight yards, and when coming, trying to come back under, he pushed me further in. Because when I went in, I wanted to come back out and in. Here. Well, just he, try to stay outside and work right. him outside and come underneath him. Okay, I can do it, but... Well, so I got to stay wide, see, because there's not that much area in the hole there, right. the way you ran the last one. Right, right. You're yeah. right. I knew I was too Which far in. Jeff? But he gave it to me no, so early, I tried to get in and then back but up. You get back out, it's fine. Right. Big down, D. Let's go, Dunk! Let's go, Dunk, baby! Only three points behind, Blanda tried to get his ground game moving. But the tenacious Colt defense would not allow more than a grudging two or three yards at a crack. And the Raiders were forced to give up the ball. Back on offense again, John Unitas immediately started to drive for more points and more breathing room. In crucial third and short yardage situations, Unitas relied on the running and blocking of Tom Nowatzki. And the tough young rookie from Texas Christian, Norm Boulash. The 
the old Statue of Liberty play with Norm Boulash carrying took care of the final 11 yards to the Oakland goal. From the end zone camera, we can see that the Colts blocked the play about as well as a team can block. Oh, to be a rookie scoring his second touchdown in a championship game. After three quarters of play, Baltimore led Oakland 20 to 10. Trailing by 10 points, with only one quarter to play, George Blander ran the Raiders into high gear. A draw play to Charlie Smith covered 20 yards, the longest run of the day. to Smith, Blanda faded back and threw long for Warren Wells. The 37-yard play brought the Raiders to the Colt 11, where Blanda on third and long again looked for Wells. Despite the Colts' protestations, in checking the replay, we can see that Wells did have possession as he crossed the goal line. With more than 13 minutes still to play, Oakland now trailed by only three. For the Colts, the championship of their new conference was on the line. Blander and the Raiders were coming on just as they had all year, and it was now up to the Colts' offense and John Unitas to cool off the Raiders and ice the game. On first down, Unitas tried to open up the passing game again, but his forced throw was almost intercepted. On second down, the Oakland pass coverage was again perfect, and Unitas was forced to run right into Big Ben Davidson's left foot. For a long moment, it looked as though the Baltimore attack might be finished for the day. Dead in the dust of the Baltimore dirt ball. But true to his legendary reputation, from his own 32-yard line, 68 yards from the Oakland goal, on third down, 11 to go, John Unitas came up with the play of the day for the Colts. crucial touchdown from two different angles, we can see how open Ray Perkins was. A wide receiver playing tight end for this one play, Perkins completely fooled cornerback Nemiah Wilson, sent in as a fifth defensive back to cover Perkins, and suddenly the Colts had regained their 10-point lead, 27-17. As everyone knows, the Oakland Raiders are never out of it as long as old George is around. And old George still had 12 minutes to work his magic. In his eighth championship game, 43-year-old George Blander 
through more passes for more completions, more yardage and more touchdowns than the younger fellow, Unitas. Pretty sprightly for a guy who was playing in the pros when Unitas was a sophomore in high school. But the rugged Baltimore defenders were not awed by the old man and his magic. Four times they made him pay the price of glory. man who at one point in the season had saved the Raiders five successive times had run out of miracles and in the end his receivers were left desperately clutching at the wind twice in the fourth quarter Blander and the Raiders were shut off by interceptions deep in cold territory The dejected Raiders had been victimized by the famous Baltimore deep zone defense. Fittingly, the Colts' third and final interception was by a linebacker, Ray May, 35 yards deep in the zone. And so on that clear, sparkling January day in Baltimore's Dirt Bowl, the Colts had won the first championship of the new American Football Conference. And in so doing, they had defeated Pro Football's miracle team, a team whose record over the past four years had been the best in pro football. The Colts were in the Super Bowl again, and this time they had won their way with a very different team, with new starters at many key positions. But if there was one man who more than any other did in the Oakland Raiders, it was a 37-year-old, 15-year veteran named John Unitas, who concluded a season-long journey from the old NFL to the new AFC with one of the greatest games in his brilliant career. John Unitas and the Baltimore Colts once represented the strength of the old National Football League. But they were remembered as the first NFL team to lose in the Super Bowl. Now as standard bearer for the new American Football Conference, the Colts finally had what they all had dreamed of, a new life and another chance. <laughs>